Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In today's video, we'll be discussing the Dev Gems, Capybara WebKit, and Database Cleaner. So we'll get those set up and I'll show you how to use them in your app. So if you want to code along, you'll need to have a Rails app created, RSpec installed and set up, and a home controller created with an index view. So these things I've outlined in other videos that you can check out, the Get Launching to Generating an App, and the Dev Gems demo from last week, RSpec Rails. And just a recap of our gem file, we've already gone over gem RSpec Rails, and today we'll go over Capybara WebKit and Database Cleaner. So be sure to have those in your gem file and bundled. So Capybara WebKit tests JS in a headless WebKit, that's Safari and Chrome. Some frameworks actually open up browsers as they test JS, and this does not. It makes it a little more streamlined. So here's the address to the GitHub repository for the gem, and let's check that out to see what information it has. Here we are on the Capybara WebKit page. And if we scroll down, we'll see it first mentions a QT dependency, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and scroll some more and information if you want to use it um, on a CI and other usage. So if we scroll some more, then we're going to see some great information about non-standard driver methods. And these can help you out if you encounter an error message and need to add something to let your test go through. Yes, let's now talk about the dependencies. Uh, Capybara WebKit depends on Qt, and so there are instructions on how to install this on your operating system. So let's take a look at this page, and if you scroll down, you can see numerous operating systems, as most people will be on a Mac, so you'll use Homebrew to install it. I'm actually a Linux gal, and so I scrolled all the way down to where I can find for Ubuntu, on how to install it there. And if you scroll down even more, there's lots of operating systems, so you should be covered. Let's now talk about Database Cleaner. This is needed to keep your database clean and necessary as Capybara WebKit runs your Rails app separately from RSpec. So if you didn't clean the database, you may end up with duplicate data, which will cause your specs to fail, and it may not be apparent why. So now let's check out the documentation. So we'll scroll on down. On this page, it has um, some alternative recipes for how to use database cleaner. So I have my own recipe, but feel free to check out the documentation and see how you may want to do it differently. Now we're going to set these bad boys up. So here are the different configurations you'll need to add to your Rails helper. We'll require the Capybara RSpec and the WebKit matchers is also very helpful. And we'll tell it to use the WebKit for the JavaScript driver. And here is a recipe that I use for database cleaner. We'll move on over to our text editor and I already have open the Rails helper. So we'll, this is where you require these two line items and then we'll scroll down and you would put the JavaScript driver below RSpec configure in this section. And then you scroll on down, and here's where you put the recipe for the database cleaner. And so this is the one I have where it would clean before and after. All right, now let's move on to actually using Capybara WebKit in our app. So we're gonna update our home spec and add a new scenario that will use JavaScript. So we've actually already written the scenario that the visits uh, and sees the welcome text, and that has been passing. We've now going to add a scenario. The visitor sees the Kirk quote and add that special marker JS true to tell it to use JS. And so we'll revisit the root path and expect the page not to have errors, and that means not to have JavaScript errors. So we'll click a button that opens a modal. And so we're going to expect that modal to have the text, beam me up, Scotty. And then we'll click close to make sure that the modal closes correctly and expect the page not to have the text, beam me up, Scotty. Now let's move into our text editor and add that new scenario to our home spec. So we'll open up the home spec and we have the previous scenario already there. So let's add the new one with Kirk and save it. So the next part is to actually run the spec to make sure that it is written correctly. So we're going to run just that one spec with spec features home spec. 
rb. So let's go into our terminal and add that and it's going to run. And we have two scenarios that it's going to check. So the first here, oh, I'm getting an error message about rake db migrate. I'll take care of that next. So the first scenario passed, which we thought it would, and we're expecting the second one to fail since we've just added it, and it does. Great, so let's scroll up and see what the failure message is. And it says that we are missing the button Kirk quote. That's correct since we haven't added it yet. At the time of this recording, we're getting some depreciation warnings because Capybara WebKit needs to update some of the methods. And I've looked and they are working on it. Now we will work towards making that spec pass. So we need the HTML in our home index view, which will include a modal button to open the modal and then the actual modal with the background and a window and the beam me up Scotty text. So moving into our text editor, go into views, home index, and we will now add the additional HTML to this page and we will save. So the next step is to add the CSS necessary to make it a modal. So the modal background has that display none, so it won't show right away. And then the other CSS for the modal window, the modal text, and of course the close link that we will also include. Back to our text editor, go into assets, style sheets, home.scss, and now include this so that it's just CSS for the home page. So we're going to save that. Next up is that all important JS, or in this case, jQuery that we're actually going to add to the index HTML because I want to play around and show you a few things in just a moment. So this jQuery responds to the click and opens the modal background and then a click to then fade out the modal. Moving back into our text editor, we will go back into the index.html and add it at the bottom here. That's where you usually put JS that goes in the actual file. Now let's go to our command line and, oh, see I did the rake db migrate earlier to fix that up. So we'll run this spec again and we're hoping for two green dots this time. So we have our first one and now we're waiting to see if our new spec, our new scenario passes and it does. For those who like to see the code in action, I will open up a new terminal tab and run the server with Rails S in there, and then open up a browser and navigate to localhost 3000, which we will see as our basic button. So we'll click on Kirk quote, beam me up Scotty, and close. You may be saying, hey Melissa, in this scenario, it seems that we're using regular Capybara and RSpec. I mean, what is this have errors? What is it really testing? So it's a great smoke test just to make sure that you are in fact loading JavaScript or jQuery, or if the plugin you're using has any errors, it will find them right away. So for example, we have here the JavaScript include tag to the application JS, which includes jQuery for us. That's standard with Rails. But what if we've been messing around with our layout and somehow we delete this call? Oh no, what's gonna happen? I know, crazy. So let's go ahead back to our terminal and we will run the spec again and see what happens. So our first one should pass as usual. And then the second one should fail and it does. So let's scroll up and see what it's saying. It's saying, hey there, JavaScript error. We can't find the variable dollar sign, which is for jQuery. So let's put that back. Let's put it back the way it was. I'm going to show you another example of how to use Capybara WebKit. Maybe you just want to execute and test one specific script. So I will put in an example here that will actually run a missing function or try to. So the syntax is page.execute script and then just that specific script. So now we will move back into home index and add this script into our file. So you see that I'm trying to make it fail by adding something that is not there. So we'll paste that in 
and let's go ahead and run the spec again. So I've started it already, so the first one has passed, and we're waiting to see if the second scenario will fail, which it should. And it does, so let's go ahead and read the error message scrolling up. And we'll see that WebKit says it's an invalid response error, and that JavaScript failed to execute. That's it for this episode of Ruby Thursday. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about Capybara WebKit and how to use it in your app. If you have any questions or suggestions for other folks, be sure to leave a comment below. If you are not already on my mailing list, be sure to sign up at rubythursday.com so you can get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.